So before the chairs come, to get one more mic, I want you all to repeat after me. Even if you've not heard someone else say this to you, I want your to tell. I want you to tell yourself, I am beautiful. Please repeat after me. It doesn't matter. I am beautiful. I, I am beautiful. Is that an Arabic? Oh wow, it's beautiful. Repeat after me. I am disciplined. Excellent. Now I say, I am excellent. Wonderful. Every day when you are at home, repeat this. Look at the mirror and tell this that I am beautiful. I am bold. I am strong. I am disciplined. I am excellent. And next time when you see me, tell me how you feel. Yeah? Yeah, let's wait for the mic and uh, before that, let me introduce myself. I'm Annie Abraham. I'm a life transformation coach. You know what I do? I rewrite women's story. I help them to rewrite women's story. And I help them to gain happiness, confidence and peace of mind. Today I'm here to represent Oman Book Lovers Club. The founder and CEO, Anisha. Because she's at home and she's not well, so I decided I'm going to represent her. So let me read a few things about Oman Book Lovers Club. Yeah? First of all, it's such a great honor to be here today to represent Anisha, yeah, the founder of Oman Book Lovers Club. I'm deeply grateful to the organizers Oman Automobile Association and for Women Team. Particularly Lubna and Iman. Where are they? Thank you. Thank you. I'm really grateful for you guys giving us the opportunity and uh, this wonderful uh, platform to empower every woman here. So let's all join hands in creating a world where every woman has a chance to thrive and achieve greatness. And thank you for having me here. Oman Book Lovers Club is a community of almost 7,000 members that connects readers, authors and bookstores in Oman. We have an ever-growing free borrowing library of close to 6,000 books available for sharing. So if you are, if you love to read books, if you want to find even books of authors from Oman, please go ahead to Oman Book Lovers Tall and get yourself registered because you can read books for free from there. Our vision is to build a learned society that uplifts women and children in Oman and shapes future leaders. Now I want to ask you, does anybody want to write? Do you have a dream to write a book? Do you have a dream to write poetry or be an author? I want to ask at least one of you, does anybody want to write? Or what does the, what is that struggle that you have? when it comes to writing. I'm, I'm looking forward for a response. What is that one struggle that you have when it comes to writing? Yes. Hi, how are you? When I think to write, I always think to write the story of my life. Maybe because I have passed through so many things. So I wish if I could share with everyone, like a moral, or maybe for my kids also. What's your name? Afnan. That's so beautiful because that's exactly what I did. I wrote a book about my story and I have people reading, so you should do it too. And that's exactly what we are going to do. We are having 
Najma, who is a poetess and she's written a beautiful book and she's going to talk about it. So please put your hands together and welcome Najma. Hi everyone. Thank you for having me. Salam alaikum. Uh, so Najma, can you introduce yourself to everyone here? Alright. Uh, my name is Najma, obviously. I published a book and I started writing the book at the age of 15 and I only published it around uh, two years, maybe three years back and it's available on Amazon, both Amazon and locally with me. It's available as an audiobook, uh, an ebook on Kindle and a paperback. And the reason why I took um, the route of using Amazon is because I wanted it to be international. Um, I graduated soon from college and uh, I'm working now, just going through life. Sadly, I don't write as I did before, but um, at least I can say that I published the book after having the people that care for me push me to do it. It's beautiful. Um, so did you tell them the name of the book? Oh yeah, the name of the book is uh, A Bouquet of Poetry. It is basically a collection of poems and it doesn't touch a certain topic. Would you guys like me to also speak in Arabic? It's fine? Okay, good. So the book is a collection of poems and it's not necessarily things that are happening in daily life. It could be imagination as well. And the reason why I wrote this book and I ended up publishing it, at first it felt personal, but then I thought that, you know, if someone out there can relate to what I'm writing, why shouldn't I share it with other people? Because usually we go through things and we feel like I'm going through this alone, it's a tough time and things like that. You know, we have these kind of thoughts. So the purpose of that was to read something and have it resonate with you. And as long as one person feels something, then I think I did what I needed to do. Fabulous. Um, so what inspired you actually to write and does your book have any themes, something like that, that can motivate, uh, that motivated you to compel, complete this collection or um, compile this collection? Yeah, I, I started writing at a very young age. So my dad used to travel a lot and I would actually write him letters. Even though he wouldn't receive those letters, he would get them when they, he comes back home. But it just started there. And then during school, my English teachers were very, uh, they were very motivated. They were like, you should pursue something in journalism. But I didn't feel like that's my field, you know. And it started with writing short stories and then it proceeded into writing poems. And after some of my friends pushing me and things like that, I was like, okay, maybe I should go to the poem rooms. Uh, yeah, and there is no specific thing really. It can be happy, it can be sad. Things like that. So you go with the flow? Yeah, I go with the flow, you can say that. You know, I've met a lot of authors, but this is the first time I'm meeting a poetess. And I'm so glad that I met you. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah? So are there any, um, and how, how have you overcome challenges? or obstacles in your career or personal life and what lessons have you learned from these experiences? Uh, well, since I use writing as an outlet, I felt that uh, it almost feels like I'm translating what's going inside me into paper and that felt like it's a weight coming off my shoulder. I think that started from there and I have this journal that I don't start it with Dear Diary. I just go in writing things that I would like to change, for example, about myself or the situation. And then through that process, I realized that if there is any obstacle, the first thing to do is that I need to accept that this is an obstacle and try running away from it. Or else it's just going to disrupt, you know, how I, pre how I proceed in life, basically. So I need to accept the obst uh, obstacle. And then I need to see, is it something I can change? If it's something I can change, then I don't need to worry. If it's something I can't change, it's bigger than me, then God is going to handle it, you know? So I can say that uh, that's how I deal with the obstacles. And my advice to people would be just take your obstacles as either lessons or blessings. It's either one of those things. You can always come out with a positive 
outlook, you know? It doesn't have to be that toxic positivity where you force it, but at some point you're gonna have to accept that. I was supposed to learn something. And if I don't learn from the situation, then the universe is going to continuously send me this, um, this obstacle until I need to learn the lesson that I have to. That's lovely, you got me there when you said that you journal. Because I journal a lot and that's helped me and mm. I guess that's, there's a lot of connection now. Yeah. Um, in your opinion, what are some of the biggest barriers or challenges facing women in general and how can we overcome them? I think the biggest barrier can be the preconceived notions. Preconceived notions and ideologies that are being forced from everyone around us. It, you know, someone could say that the kind of life you're choosing is wrong. There's that, uh, you know, feminism right now is coming out and it's spreading in our country a lot. And I think people are taking it as a, as a way to, I hate men instead of this is, you know, this is supposed to be helping women. And, um, this preconceived notion of, oh, feminism is this, feminism is that, women are this. If you're if you're a woman, you need to be strong and independent. You can't uh, you can't be a housewife. You can't be a working uh, woman. It's it's like at every single step there is something wrong. How you choose to present yourself, there is something wrong. And I think at some point you're just gonna have to let what others have to force on you let go. You know. From there onwards, then you can just ignore and then see what works for you. If it works for you being a uh, stay-at-home wife, then go ahead. If it works for you being a working woman, go ahead. If you want to choose the corporate life, if you want to choose looking after your business, everything works, you know. And I think we shouldn't always look at things as we have to be equal as much as we need to get what we deserve. Because equal doesn't always mean you're going to get what you deserve. That was a mature talk, Najma, and um, I, I completely agree with you. Um, how can women support and empower each other and what steps can we take to create a more inclusive and supportive environment for women? I think just having a supportive community in general, um, like, because we have this I, I, I admit that this is something I used to do before, but after learning, reading, and um, you know, being around people, I learned that this is wrong. It's we have this thing where we're always like in a competition: who's better, who looks better, who has the who has the best items, who has the best clothes, who has the best job. I think the first thing is we need to stop looking at each other from this lens of I need to be better than that person, and I need to instead be you know, on her side. I'm not saying be on someone's side even when everything is going wrong, it's just that in certain situations you can say that us women are very dismissed and we're very quick to dismiss each other and I think that's the first thing we need to do is stop dismissing each other and actually take each other importantly because if we don't do that, then who's going to do that? You can't expect that from the other gender because they always back each other up. You know, and it's, it always feels like we're in this constant circle that we're supposed to be seeking acceptance from them. And that's not really good in the long run when you are down and you need the help of another woman. If anything, women relationships are very nurturing if you think about it, you know. We get to share, we get to talk, we get to be emotional with, you, with each other. Like, you can see the friendships around us. They feel very nurturing and loving. And I think if we can extend that to not only in our friend groups, that would be really good. That was very deep and profound. <laughs> yeah. And I just uh, prior to this, you were saying that you know we should listen to ourselves. It's important that we listen to our hearts. And uh, thank you, Najma, for you know really uh, giving us a lot of insights, uh, especially being young. And you have so much for women, just yeah, to empower women. And I think that you know many women in this world really need someone like you. Thank uh, you. And before we leave, I would like to, because it's all about women empowering women, so I want to share something, three words, just give you three words before you go so that you'll remember this. Three words, are you all ready? 
So just tell me, wave your hands and say, I'm ready. Yes, yes. Um, so the word is at. A C T. At. Okay? A is for achieve. What do you want to achieve in life? When, what do you want to achieve in life? Go and pursue them. If you want to write a book, if you want to learn a new language, if you want a job, if you want to start a business, what do you want to achieve in life? Go and pursue that. The next letter, C, is change. What do you want to achieve? So what changes can you make in your life? Go and change that. What changes you want to change in your life? The T stands for today, not tomorrow, today. The best time is today to take action. If you want to achieve, change something today. So A-C-T, achieve, change today. Thank you very much. Have a great evening and thank you once again for giving us the opportunity. Bye-bye.